Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are live with the 6.5 at the Lattice Semiconductor Avant launch event in Silicon Valley at the Computer History Museum. It is rocking here. We love good tech, and we love even more talking to the most influential people in the industry. Awesome stuff, Dan. How are you? Doing well. Always good to be here in the Silicon Valley, especially when we're talking about silicon. And today was a big day for Lattice Semiconductor. It's great to have him here on the 6.5 on the road, Pat. We've got uh, a lineup of the stars here from the company. You want to go ahead and introduce them to the show? Yeah, absolutely. So Jim, Steve, Assam, welcome to the show and Hi, congratulations thanks, on Thank the you. big event. Uh, Y'all know I love product launches and in my role, I get to do about so 150 a year, <laughs> you know, wow. but uh, congratulations. No, it, it is, oh, we can sign you up. Just, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk after the show. No, but seriously, congratulations on a big launch. It's been years uh, in the making and it is fun I, I i admit as an analyst seeing the front end and the planning and where you've taken the company jim and your team and now we are here today but i i know you like it's it's not time to even you know let's pat ourselves on the back for five minutes and and move on uh, to make this thing even bigger, a success. For sure, we are definitely even working on the next big thing. But uh, yeah, today is a, definitely a big day for us. Uh, you know, a, a major product announcement for us, and that's uh, the launch of Lattice Avant. Right. And what that does for the company is it doubles our addressable market. So it is, if you look over the history of the company, and Lattice will be 40 years old next year. We're all a little bit yeah. older than 40, <laughs> some to, be, more than to, others. to be honest. <laughs> but, I don't know but, how many, <laughs> some more than others crowd. So. But <laughs> Lattice, uh, if you look back over that 40 year history, this is uh, hands down the biggest product expansion in the company's history. So we're super excited about that. But um, more, more excited about what that means for our customers, because right. for our customers what that means is we're bringing just a tremendous amount of innovation and product differentiation to our customers. Lattice has historically always been really strong in small FPGAs, and now right. we're taking all of that strength and we're bringing it to mid-range FPGAs. And our customers are super excited about that, very excited about the competitive differentiation that we're bringing. Yeah. We start out the morning, uh, you know, we got a chance to get a little sneak preview. Can't say too much about that because, you know, we didn't want to get out ahead of everyone, but, but it, was, it was really interesting. Well, maybe we of, did, you asked us not to. <laughs> you know, we did, we wanted to, we didn't do it, but you know, it's, it's always good. I like getting around these kinds of launches because frankly, you know, we just need to see innovation continue to be pushed. And, and Lattice, you know, over the last several quarters, I think both of us have written our pieces about, you know, market outperform consistently, you know, growing, being in the right market spaces. You know, yeah. I love that you've had such low exposure in the consumer because of course, as this kind of market is rotated over, some of those bets you made in communications and in automotive and in the edge and 5G have really started to pay off big. And so, you know, congrats on the announcement. By the way, that moment when you were sitting there, you know, I think you may have even had your shoes off, Jim, and you were just like meditating, <laughs> like an hour before the You're launch. You're not supposed and you were, to say that, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> CEOs are real people. He was yeah. relaxing, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. I was like, I said to you, I said, you look like you're in the zone and you're ready to go, and you were like taking that one minute, and then you came up on stage, you had that perfect moment holding the chip, and I even tweeted, I'm like, that's that CEO moment where that they hold. Fun. Well, that, the that was challenge, fun. Well, the challenge, though, the challenge, though. Yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> the challenge, though, is you have a chip that small. I think I've got it, it here. Yeah. You know, it's like, get this picture. Well, where is it? <laughs> I zoomed well, in. then I got to make sure that I, I, I hold. In yeah, it's it, so this is the chip um, that uh, is uh, the Abon platform. But yeah, it's also small. But um, I uh, had to make sure I had the writing up uh, the right direction too. But, yeah, you're yeah, like very <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah very fun to show that. So Jim, you um, it it obviously takes a village and a team, uh, and you're the coach of the team, but there's a lot of deep tech that, that goes into that. And sure. I'm curious, Steve, if you can double click and listen, I know you love all of your technology babies, but maybe talk about some of the highlights of the, of the innovation, the investments that you've made in terms of people and IP to get to Avant. Yeah, so Avant has really been an exciting program for us and it really has been a, a focal point for adding new innovations and as you mentioned adding new people and having talent to be able to scale our technology to that next level when you look at the types of 
solutions that we were providing and the problems we're solving with mid-range yeah. uh, compared to the small end of the market, there really is a lot more new technologies that you need to have, right? And it really scales faster when you can have your core team leverage and catapult from bringing in talent that is expert uh, in these other areas. And when you look at you know, the types of innovations our customers needed for their next gen products, it wasn't just in the hardware, it was in the software as well. And so we had a lot of innovations on both fronts, right? Um, our hallmark innovation has always been power efficiency, right? right? We've always been really good at cramming in a lot of technology in a small footprint with very low power. But it was also very important as we scaled up to the mid-range, we significantly increased the amount of bandwidth that they have to get data in and off the chip and scale the compute capabilities as well. So those were some really key focus areas for us when we were scaling our technology uh, to the what next level. What did you do on the, a, the, the AI side? I mean, that guy, was it a 6X increase in performance of AI or maybe it was even more? Correct me if oh, I'm wrong. 30X. Well, we have 30X compared 30X. to our prior generation. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah. There so we go. So six times five. Yeah. Exactly, yes. no, that, thank you very much. <laughs> no, but how did, you, how did you implement that? Was this classic, yeah. um, you know, new design, more LUTs, smaller form factor, or was there some secret sauce in there that enabled you to do it? You can't do 30X with scaling. No, uh, it doesn't in, just happen by going to a happen. new technology. No so way. if you can share a little bit of that sure. secret sauce, it'd be great. Yeah, so it was really a blend of factors, right? And first, yeah, having more uh, logic cells, that's a big factor, right? So we're five times bigger, so that was a decent chunk of it. But the programmable fabric's running 50% faster than the prior generation too. So that gives you another kicker on top of that. Right. And then we further, uh, increased and scaled the amount of DSP and embedded memory that we have in the core with all that logic. And each of the DSPs can be further decomposed into smaller compute elements, and we have dedicated logic for implementing some of those AI inferencing functions. It's all about matrix multiply, guys. Yeah. And uh, if you've got the math engine that can compute those things efficiently, you're going to get a lot more scale and performance out of that. Our, sorry, do customers have to toss out their software investment in Nexus to be able to take advantage of, of what you're bringing to the table? Absolutely not. We are going to have the exact same development tool flows supporting Avant that are already supporting Nexus today. So our Radiant software, our Propel embedded tools, they're all going to uh, be, uh, they're all leveraging uh, Avant architecture. So I want to, I want to spend just a, a <laughs> second, maybe Jim, maybe Steve, but software seemed to be like a highlight of the show. You know, obviously when you talk yeah. semis, we talk chips, people tend to always want to drive to the to the hardware, to the you know physical, the wafer, and it seems like a lot of your innovation is coming out of, of leading and leaning into software. Jim. Yeah, we definitely tried to emphasize that today because it's been a very big part of our strategy. So software for us, uh, the key part of our strategy is is about using software to make it very very easy for customers to adopt our lattice solutions and get to market quickly. Because we want customers to be able to easily take advantage of all that great innovation that Steve and the team are putting into the silicon, we want that to be very easy. And so all, from day one of the Avant development, all of our software thinking has been, how do we make it really easy for customers to adopt Avant? Customers have a lot of choices out there. I mean, they can go all the way from a controller, to a GPU, to an NPU, to an APU, to an ASIC, and everything in between, and I know DSP fits in there somewhere, but how do customers decide which direction they go? It, it is pretty amazing. It, I look at some of the capabilities that, that you put up today, particularly in the AI part. Yeah. Um, I've seen at other companies who basically are in different, doing different types of of chips than uh, you are. Maybe Asan, we could start with you on that yeah, one. Yeah, and before that, I just want to comment on what Steve talked about, the innovation from the uh, Lattice development team, and just yeah. the consistent pace of execution. And, you know, when we started this, we, we spent time with over 100 customers, and you can imagine, I, I go visit the customers, I come back, Steve will ask me, so what do you learn from the customers? I'm like, hey Steve, you just got to make it more capable, significantly <laughs> lower power, much smaller, and it has to leverage all of our Did tools. you have to <laughs> talk That's to when I said, let me talk to the customer, I'll get the real scoop. Did you actually have to talk to customers to get that? <laughs> that does that feel like, like the office space moment? I take the information from the customer right. and I bring it down, yeah. <laughs> Then why can't we just the engineers talk can't to talk the to the customer? <laughs> <laughs> but tremendous work by our, our development teams to bring out the Avant platform. And to your to your question about how to decide what to use, 
there's a, there's a lot of factors, but they're engineers. You know, they want technology. They want a solution that makes it easier for them to get to market. They want to innovate on their products. They want their end products to be differentiated. And having a flexible, programmable FPGA with these innovative capabilities around power efficiency, you know, meeting their performance and application needs, and having that tiny physical size that Jim just showed you, that makes a big right. difference for them. It helps them innovate, get to market faster, and differentiate on their own products. You know, it seems like the, the industry used to be a lot simpler, right? And in, in semiconductors, it was performance, uh, power, and area, right? PPA, that was it, baby. Yeah. But really, we've gotten to more of the experience, which is how do I make the connection between yeah. the customer and even the customer's customer exactly, yeah. and, and experience, and no longer is a bag, just a bag of parts um, gonna, gonna suffice. So I'm, I'm curious, Assam, how are you enabling new experiences? You know, we've kind of tiptoed around that a little bit, but I want to hear from, you know, the guy who spends a lot of time with customers enabling this, and how are you different? I mean, you know, at the end, it's, it's how, how are you different in enabling their killer experiences. Yeah, and, and there's a few things that we do. Um, number one, customer intimacy is really, really important. But, let you, but like you talked about, you have to understand the customer's customer as well. And one of the things that we've done within Lattice is actually we've brought in people that worked from our customers that know the end product. I'll give you a good example. When you look at our uh, compute market where we do server and client type applications, we actually have folks within our marketing team, we call them Markitex, that actually came from our end customers. So they know the challenges, they know what they're trying to do, they, they can take, and we've got all the FPGA experience within Lattice, but that helps close the bridge because now you've got open conversations within the company that we can go speak their language. So now right. we're using the same terminology as they're using or that their end customers are using. And that really helps not just from the customer intimacy and building the trust, but it helps us identify new ways to leverage this flexible, programmable FBGA to build those new sets of applications. You know, just building on that is um, one of the things that I know from doing so many events that we always look for are those customers. And you guys kind of broke out customers, IP partners, uh, OEMs, and, you, and that slide was impressive. And I said, you know, um, I wish you'd have shown it generation to generation, because I think over the last few generations that slide went from, you know, yeah. very few <laughs> to very full. Yeah. And um, you know, getting them to show up and talk though, we constantly are talking to customers, let us talk to your customers off the record, let us take them on the record, and that's hard. You guys had a nice showing of customers today. What do you kind of attribute the fact that they're so willing to step up and, and, and be yeah, vocally and, supportive? And, and as you noticed as well, those customers, there were more videos, we just didn't want to show them all because of the length of time. But if you notice the titles of those individuals, they were all decision makers and engineers. I mean, there are people in the, in, in, really in the development cycle uh, themselves. But it really goes back to, again, the customer intimacy, the need to have and work with an FPJ supplier that's willing to build a roadmap aligned with their needs. And that customer intimacy and us being able to work closer with the customers, I think that's a testament of how we've made it easier for them to adopt our solutions, both hardware and software as well. And kudos to the sales team. I mean, the yeah. sales team yeah. does an outstanding job in reaching out and building that intimacy. Would well, you think say that customer proximity is your biggest differentiator as a, as a company? Or is it, you know, the, the core tech? I'm going to make you decide here, Jim. Is it, <laughs> you know, we, you know we, or... We always pass on the tough questions. Well, <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer is going to be it's amalgamation of all, but, but I, I really, I, a lot of questions I get, Jim, yeah. from your customers, your ecosystem, and even investors are, what make, why are you different? How are you able to do this? Because it's not that often you see a you know, lower left, you know, up to the right on almost every metric, including things like, it means a lot to me, product velocity, yeah. right? It's one thing to, listen, and the financials are important, but there's also uh, partners, there's stickiness, there's uh, them coming back to you for more and doing more with you. There's the basket across product. There's so many metrics and all those look really good to me. Yeah, you know, I think of course you have to have a great product roadmap, right? Um, and that's certainly what we've been building. 
But I think culture is important to customers as well, right? I, I've had a lot of customers talk to us, talk to me about, um, you know, the, hey, the culture of Lattice, when we interact with Lattice, it's different. And we appreciate that. How so? It's, it, it's, it's from when I first joined Lattice, I noticed this. It's a very collaborative, customer-focused culture. Okay. The every Lattice employee loves supporting and interacting with customers. And when I first joined the company, I said, um, hey, I think this is a real fundamental differentiator for the company. Yeah. And I think that that's not the case across all companies, right? But um, I, I think that that can be a real differentiator for us. And it's a it's a basic DNA that's within Lattice, which I think has been cultivated over our 40 year history. And so when I joined, I really wanted to encourage that, right? right. Like let's, let's absolutely be even better about that. Let's do even more around that. And so I think, yes, of course, we have to build great products for our customers and we have to innovate for them. But I think the, the taking it to the next level with a customer is having a culture that's, that really embraces the customer and wants to bring them in and form a relationship that's not just about one design win or two design wins, but it's a multi-generational. It's more strategic. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So Jim, the ground truth, as Pat and I always like to say when we're uh, on our earnings podcast, is always what you guys come out with when you share results. You know, but the investor that are that are here, several were here, saw their badges walking around, and so while it wasn't your investor day, that'll be later, I believe, in twenty three. Yeah, um, yeah. The investors tend to be the you know what you say the arbiter of how good a product is, and they basically, it's the how the company performs in the market over a long time. We'll just say that. We'll. Maybe we'll agree, maybe we won't. But um, <laughs> it tends to be. Companies that perform if, well. If anybody's listened to the podcast, Daniel and I look at it a little bit differently. Right. But, but oh, we like to good. talk about it. We call it the ground truth. That yeah. we, we really do. So, you know, you, you said you're going to double the SAM. That's obviously in itself a really big opportunity yeah. for investors. But how do you think the investor community should be looking at this announcement? Uh, is there anything more to it than just that double the SAM opportunity? I, I think it's, for investors, the really simple way to look at it, which I think is the right way to look at it, is the products that we announced today, the platform that we announced today, creates a totally new revenue stream for the company, a totally greenfield, brand new revenue stream that is completely additive to the company's existing revenue stream. We're certainly focused on continuing to grow in the part of the market that Lattice has always been traditionally strong in, which is small FPGAs. So we're certainly focused on continuing to grow there. But Avant, as it enters production and ramps with our customers, that creates a completely additive revenue stream that we believe will accelerate revenue growth out in time for the company. And as an investor, to, that's kind of music to my ears, right? Additive greenfield revenue growth on top of the existing uh, business, and, and it's a very straightforward extension of our existing business. When we look at the target customers of Avant, 90% of those target customers are already customers today. So it's a, it's a natural extension of our existing business. I think it's about revenue acceleration. That's what's exciting for the investors. Do you have a sense of revenue expansion? You said 90% of them are, are out there. Do you have a sense of uh, how quickly they'll adopt? I mean, I saw the chart, so a lot of them are saying yes. Definitely, we gotta, but we gotta leave a little bit for the investor day okay. next year. <laughs> Daniel, yeah. come on. I mean, okay. we got Leading the witness, sir. <laughs> yeah. Jim, uh, uh, I think final question on, yeah. on the investor part. Is there any play between kind of lowest cost, sorry, lowest power and the mid-range? Meaning, if you have a better, if you, if, if you're in mid-range yeah. and it's good experience, does it help you in the current business at all? Uh, definitely. I think when you look at um, especially industrial and automotive customers, but I think this is also true with communications customers as well, but the, the majority of uh, the types of FPGAs that an industrial and automotive customer uses is actually mostly mid-range and small FPGAs. Okay. That's the majority of what they use. And so now with this product line expansion, Lattice is able to service almost all of the needs uh, FPGA needs of the vast majority of our customer base. And so that, that certainly helps us. Okay. Well, Jim, Steve, Sam, I want to thank you all for joining us here on the 6.5. Big day for you all at the uh, Lattice Avant launch. And uh, we really appreciate you all joining us here. And we look forward to having you on our show 
again sometime soon. All right. Thank Great. You so Thank much. you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in here to the 6.5 on the road at the Lattice Avant Launch at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View in the Silicon Valley. For Patrick and myself, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed what you hear. We would love to have you for all our episodes, but we got to go. So we'll see you later. Bye-bye now.